We do start with breaking news this morning. One person dead after the driver on a motorcycle lost control and crashed. Let's check in with News Channel 5's Cuthbert Langley. He's on the scene down in the Bellevue area. And are they still looking at speed as a possible cause on this, Cuthbert? Steve, that really seems to be the main factor into this deadly accident. Police say the motorcyclist was driving at a high rate of speed before crashing here on Highway 100. You can see it and hear it. The roadways have reopened after several hours of being closed. Let me show you what police believe happened. They say this motorcyclist was driving down Highway 100 right here again at a high rate of speed. When he was rounding that corner right there where you see that truck coming, that's where he supposedly lost control and then flipped off the motorcycle. As awful as this is, his body was found in one part of the road and the motorcycle was found about 100 yards away. And here's what the scene looked like around 1230 last night. That's when police say this accident happened. This is Highway 100 right around South Harpeth Road. We're right in front of the Harpeth Hill Cemetery. And this area was shut down for several hours as the fatal team was out here investigating working to get their measurements to figure out exactly what happened here. The medical examiner was on scene around 4.15 this morning, and then about 45 minutes later, that's when the road reopened. But again, there were several witnesses out here, Steve, that told police they saw this man driving the motorcycle at a high rate of speed. It's a pretty straight fare right here until you get to that curb. Uh, so uh, police believe that they are working, excuse me, to notify the next of kin, his family, before releasing his identity to us. And get this, guys, police do say a, a helmet was being used. The guy did have a helmet on, but obviously speed was just too much for this man who died again around 1230 this morning. We're live here in Bellevue. I'm Cuthbert Langley, News Channel 5 HD. All right, Cuthbert, thanks for the update on that. A wrong way crash shut down part of the interstate this morning for hours. It happened around 4 o'clock on I-24 right there over the Sullivan Evans Bridge. We're told that a driver going west in the eastbound lanes hit another car head on. Several people were hurt, but police tell us they are expected to survive. No word yet if that wrong way driver is going to be facing charges. And a tragic development this morning in the search for a missing toddler. Kentucky State Police say the body of two-year-old Laney Wallace was found in a well on this property in Monroe County yesterday. Police say Laney was taken by her mother's boyfriend last week. Anthony Barber was arrested during a traffic stop yesterday. No word yet on what charges he's facing. And it's not clear exactly how Laney died. An autopsy will be performed today in Louisville. New this morning, one man has been taken to the hospital after being shot in the leg overnight at the University Court in South Nashville. Around 11 o'clock, they say, police are telling us a large group of people gathered in the streets. They started brawling and shots were fired. The victim hit, went to Vanderbilt, but should be all right. It was a pretty large crime scene, though. Several vehicles in the area also have bullet holes in them. Officers are still investigating what exactly happened. And also happening right now, the search for gunmen is continuing after someone was injured at an apartment complex. Metro police say a man was approached by at least two men at the Cumberland Point Apartments around 5.30 yesterday. One person got out a handgun. The victim ran but was still shot at and grazed by a bullet. Officers on the scene say the injuries are not serious. They're looking for those two suspects. You know anything about it? Call 615-74-CRIME. New this morning, a toddler was found in the middle of the road overnight, and it happened on Quail Valley Road in Donaldson. The child was seen walking down the street by someone who then called police. Officers located the child's parents who discovered the child was missing from his bed. The toddler was taken to Vanderbilt to be checked out, but had only a few scratches. We are learning more this morning about the teen that was killed in a crash over the weekend. Corey Stokes was only 18 years old and had only had his license for about two months. Stokes was on his way home from buying dog food on Saturday when he lost control of his car on Cedar Grove Road and Cross Plains. THP tells us Stokes overcorrected, which sent his car into a field. A tire blew, causing the car to roll. The team was thrown from the car. He's 18. But now he's my sweet little angel. <laughs> I'm going to miss him so much. Our heart goes out to that family. There is a GoFundMe site that will help the family cover the cost of funeral expenses. We've put that information on our website, newschannel5.com. 
We are still following some developing news this morning. Investigators trying to learn the identity of a man that was found dead at Center Hill Lake yesterday. TWRA officials say they found the body near the Holiday Haven boat ramp. Authorities tell us that a man was reported missing in that same area. In fact, the guy's wife said that her husband had gone for a swim Friday night, never came back. Right now, it's not clear if that missing person is that of the body that was found by TWRA. We have some new information this morning about a violent carjacking in Madison over the weekend. Officers have arrested Demarius Jordan in the incident, but another suspect remains on the run. For the victim, it was a terrifying ordeal Sunday morning. Is if this is my car, then he comes over here and I'm sitting in the in the driver's seat and he's like, all right, where's the money at? Where's the money at? He 19 year old Natalie Turner says the two young men robbed her at gunpoint at the Krispy Kreme off Gallatin Road. Detectives found Turner's car was being used in another crime over the weekend. Jordan is facing carjacking and theft charges. The name of the wanted suspect has not been released. Take a look at this picture. Heavy rains caused a sinkhole to open up in Clarksville. The Leaf Chronicle reports it's on Warfield Boulevard near the River Club Golf and Learning Center. Officials say it's the sinkhole is about four feet wide and three feet deep. TDOT workers filled it temporarily. Today they're going to come back and make a more durable repair. That's a mess. You don't mm -hmm. want to hit that. So you don't fall in. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're on a bicycle. Wouldn't that be terrible? <laughs> yes, Ooh. that'd be ugly. Yeah.